this area and and Cusco and in the and at the Cori Concha, the gold temple, there was always these stories of this chincana, this this underground world, these tunnels, and then this treasure was put into it. It, it part of it started at the Sun Temple where we were yesterday, but this tunnel system goes under Cusco and then goes up to to Sacsayhuaman. And, and and this might have been part of it, huh, Brian? Where, because this is part of an entrance to some cave. Mainly they've been sealed up, but it's it's very, you know, well-known legends here in Cusco of these secret underground tunnel system. And and there are various entrances. There are stories of people uh, going in, and this is like hundreds of years ago, going into the tunnel system, basically at Sacsayhuaman. And they're trying to find this vast treasure of, uh, you know, gold bars and other gold artifacts. There's supposedly these gold mummies of the early Incas. And, it, and part of the legend is that it's in Sacsayhuaman. So people would go into the tunnel system and sometimes they would completely vanish. And there's one story of a, of a guy, they were having a, a service at the church, at the Cori Concha. And suddenly during the service, there was this wrapping on the floor. And then the, the priest had this big stone in the floor of the church opened up. And this guy came out of this tunnel system with, with gold in his hands. And he had been in there for like some days. And now it was kind of it was crazy. And he died soon afterwards. But that's a very, very famous story. Things here in like Cusco. this to practice their stone cutting skills, <laughs> which is also bizarre. And you're just like, well, why? Why would anyone make these upside down staircases or whatever? Yeah, I think it, it might have been a quarry type. Well, and a lot of times, like, well, and, and part of the thing you see again, the mainstream thing is that all this is incredible effort by hundreds of people, you know, chiseling and bashing with stumps and polishing, but. But you know what the other evidence is that it's all yeah right. It's that smooth. And, yeah, and you can see how that, the mark. Also look at here and the cutting. Yeah, you talk about that one inch sort of smooth, smooth lip, lip right? There. Yeah. So so yeah right. And the same. But it's it's more. I mean the evidence would show that it that what was going on was that things were easy and people were just would be like one person yeah with a cutting machine just cutting stuff. Yeah. Are you going down Yeah, this stone is huge too. It's not high, but it's like the volume is many, 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 many tons. Uh, and the right. snake is there. Well, and, and the idea that the just, just any of the cutting of the stone might have, you know, caused some melting and stuff. And then this is this famous kind of serpent thing that's been cut into it. And then it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chakras, or should there be nine? Maybe I'm missing one. But the idea of this being a serpent and this kundalini energy, serpent energy, and you have chakra, you know, kundalini energy is at the base of your spine and it moves up to your chakras. So that's, that's one explanation. This is all shaping. Okay. And the, the, the thing is, the amount of weathering that's on the surface after it was shaped oh, yes. here, here I see your yeah, indicates yeah. Great, uh, greater antiquity than, than Inca period. But why? They cut all this stuff out like this. Is the puzzle? I don't think so because there's so many faults, so many faults in the stone. Um, and this one literally looks like it's flipped upside down. And not only that, but if you match the the pattern of that one with the pattern of this one. It's it's possible that this stone, these two stones were together, and the carving was done, and then something mega, uh, like a mega quake happened, 
split that one apart and also split this one here, made this one fall down because you'll see similar cuts on that on the surface of that one as well. So every full moon, a nine centimeter ripple goes through the Earth's crust. It just I'd never heard no, of that either. But you know, so like with earthquakes, if that wave is bigger, it's just going to flip them like boats on the water. Yeah. yeah. It's just like it just up, turned upside down. It just was up there and it rolled over down here. Well, it looks like it because it's a staircase, you know, an upside down staircase, unless your MC yeah. Escher is kind of useless. <laughs> <laughs> But it's almost like this block oh, this was originally carved, you know, and it was flipped over. Yeah. And now you, I mean, maybe an earthquake could have done that, but, you know, if you have these tractor beam type levitation things, I mean, they could have taken this giant boulder, lifted it I'm up, sorry. and flipped well, it so around. In, and in theory, it. then, this would have been flipped up on high ground. Yeah, yeah if it would have like been up there. here. The way it hit it, flipped it over and upside and this, down. Yeah, yeah, and there was already cut. And, I don't know. If that is the case, then underneath that should be probably some flat bit or more. Anybody some rock climbing and yeah. hang so you can get your feet on the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> I like the foot size of theory better. I don't know, but here comes the rain. i got to find some We'll go oh, into the go. tunnels. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Upside down staircase. Oh, we should keep moving and, and it, uh, let's, let's do head for the tunnels. Yep. Jennifer! <clears throat> Jennifer Cullen? Yeah, she's got, a, she's like got a good flashlight. Sort of flash some sort of a ceremonial spot. Well, the cool thing about this is that this was excavated 10 years ago, yeah, this was, this and was it was filled with dirt, and this is where they found at least 10 elongated skull mummies. Wow. Really? Complete. Well, those look like little thrones or something over there. Yeah, little niche niches, but this whole area, all this stuff um, is carved. And some of it looks quite, you know, some of it's quite pointless yeah, like that one. What are they doing with the skulls and the skeletons? Are they in a museum? Oh, they're in a warehouse. You know, it's a typical Indiana Jones. You know, they're in a warehouse somewhere. But this one's neat too because this, uh, this stone down here has some kind of signs of, of tool, you know, like maybe high-tech tool work was active on it. Like this cutting. This cutting mark here is doubtful that this is a hand tool. This looks more like some kind of cutter, like in the little cave we were just in. Mm -hmm. Some little cutter went past it. It's going to Lima, to going to Lake Titicaca. Uh, there's a weird town up near Lake Titicaca called Lampas where they built this church. And below the church are these catacombs. And you go down below, and in these catacombs they show you part of a tunnel that's been now blocked off, but one, part of it goes to the north, which would be to Cusco, mm -hmm. and then the other part is going to the south, which would be towards Tiwanaku and Pumapunku and stuff. But it, the whole, it, throughout Peru and, and, and the Altiplano here are all of these legends of these tunnels. It's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, big deal here. And all Peruvians have heard these stories. And there's supposedly gold treasure in the tunnels. All the Inca kings uh, supposedly were were mummified and then clad in gold, and they were kept at the Cori Concha. But at the time of the <coughs> Spanish conquest, the, the Inca started moving all this stuff out of the Cori Concha to get it away from the Spanish because they realized this is what the Spanish were after all this treasure. And so, part of the story is that they moved it into this tunnel system. So, all right. So, so there's we'll no through. telling how deep this tunnel goes? Oh, we're well, going. we're just we're going to go through a, a thing. Way. And it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's open up. And then we go through a really dark spot. And that's where we, we need. Uh, oh, I, I would have brought mine. I didn't know where Yeah, I should have told you. I brought to bring your well, way. also, if, if you look back that way and you see that really giant carved out crop, and you look on the right-hand side and you see that it's, it's broken away, that stone is called uh, the Chincana because on the right-hand side, you can but, uh, see here, where so the en actual entrance is to get into it. That's the tunnel that goes to Cusco. But the government keeps coming back and, and shoving stone back in because people are trying to dig it up. Maybe because they think there's, you know, they'll find the, the pathway to the gold. But like I said, the, well, the thing is that what the local people say is that it's not a tunnel, it's a labyrinth. And once you get in, you'll never find your way back out. They have a name for it. They call it the Chincana. Wow, it's very, very short. Where yeah, you, it's where a, you can't we, see. Okay, I filmed this before, but we're going through the 
a little chincana, little tunnel. Yeah. I definitely should have taken this and let you bring up the rear of the